That was easy for Colin. I'm Tony Fast, and my family's been blessed to be able to farm in Montana for over 100 years now. A lot has changed in those 100 years, and it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior, Jesus Christ. Morning, we're back over here at the farm. Got a few fans running, getting uh, just uh, heat out of the peas and a little bit of the moisture from the green pods. Jonathan's got those two bins emptied out yesterday. They're on their way back up to get this bin emptied up. Emptied out, up, out. So they'll be here shortly and all everything cleaned out yet this morning that we need to for putting different crop in this year. Combines are getting windows washed, greasing headers, and then it's go time again. Yesterday I had the uh, the bow broken off for the tarp strap inside of the grain cart. Get a fix. Boys, eat your weenie this morning? Nope. I didn't even have breakfast this morning. Neither did I. That was easy for Colin. There goes Johnson's to last uh, the winter wheat out. And I actually uh, had room for one load of peas. So either my bin wasn't full or the trucks got loaded full. Or both. Just about done with this block. This is a 460 acre field. We finished the 540 acre field south of here last night, yesterday afternoon, and then we have 130 left here. So almost done and ready to move across the farm to the west side after this uh, next field we cut. So this is like the sandiest farm ground we farm on this side of the farm probably actually probably the sandiest ground on all of our farm see there's some thistle some tumbleweeds and stuff that grow really well in sand and crop doesn't but you probably can't see them but there are grasshoppers that just showed up they've been in other parts of montana all summer and doing a lot of damage they are here now the green pea plants that are still out there the leaves are completely gone. The green pods are just hanging there. It looks really funny. It looks like a soybean plant compared to a, a pea plant. There's also a little uh, damage where they're chewing off the stems and the whole pods, the ripe pods are falling on the ground. So hopefully they're not on the other side of the farm and we get this all cut off here and uh, moved over there. We get that cut before they show up there. So it makes me a little nervous about all of the crop, the canola, Wheat heads, they might uh, they could do a lot of damage here yet. Moving to the last field. So they're dumping on Kevin before they move so that they can 
fill me. And then I can dump it. Getting close. But I'm gonna sit probably another half semi. You wouldn't believe it, but there's some heat coming off of that. I'm gonna fresh out of the field. Plus we have the fan blowing, so it might be a little extravagant. Bin's full. Now to move the auger to bin three. Got it in place, but every time we move it, we gotta make sure we turn that lever to shut the hydraulic off. Otherwise, all the weight of this will sink down and then it'll crush the top of the grain bin, which will not be good. So you gotta make sure you shut that off every time. Now I'm gonna take the sample bucket from taking all them tiny samples for filling the bin up. I'm gonna mix it around real good. And then I'm gonna stick it in this gallon sized bag that has the, where we're at and the year and what bin it's in. And there we have it, it's in the bag. Ready to go, get tested. I'd have to say that uh, combine technology has changed a little bit in the last 70 years. I'm guessing that's an 18 foot, 16 foot header on that thing. 45 here. We just finished it home here. I'm gonna clean off my header, run that through the combine, dump my grain tank, and we're gonna move combines over to the other side of the farm. that cave. Uh, actually to the header trailers but which is the back cave. <coughs> so so <coughs> good grief. Giant over here. So we left about I don't know 20 acres, 10, 20 acres of uh, of peas that were green in the low spots yet or where this farm's got some springs and, on it, so I'm like where natural water comes out of the ground. And they stay wet longer and don't ripen as fast. So those spots we left, and since we have these sweet sunny brook concaves in here that we don't have to change when we come back to cut the durum over here, we'll just cut those peas, put it in the bin, and we'll be done. We'll not do anything with the combine, just go cut them. So the monitor saves all the settings, just gotta change crops, and it's that easy. But we're gonna take headers off, and we will be uh, heading across the farm and go cut peas over there.
money? <laughs> Here we go. What's it gonna be? These bees look incredible. They're not cutting so fast now. They're definitely cutting a lot slower with how thick these peas are. Do you think this field's gonna go 100 bushel? That's crazy. I'm gonna go with 65. I, I think we're definitely gonna be over 60. Time will tell. So to start with, I've got a problem. Some sensor is not reading the steering wheel, so it won't let my GPS work figure that out tomorrow. I have a little bit of bailing left to do over here. Second cut, so I'm gonna go do that while dad finishes filling the cart. Tomorrow we'll go grab all uh, the trucks and conveyor and get that all moved over here in the morning and we'll get uh, back to cutting. And yes, I did try shutting it off and turning it back on again. Twice in fact. There, we made it, we got all bailed. I got uh, two bales left in the baler, one in the stacker, so we're gonna get those all stacked, get the baler cleaned out. I think we're done cutting second cut, and I think we might be done cutting alfalfa. That new seed and stuff might go yet this year, but harvest is going on, I might have a buddy swath it and round bale it, just because we're busy with harvest. So let's eject these bales and get these out of here. Well, that didn't go as planned. Goofy CVT transmissions. Put it in gear, didn't take off. Stack tipped over. Yep, we'll fix that tomorrow. Gotta be moving before you push the button. Jenga.